Hello, and welcome back to Bright Onion Music Discussion. So, this is going to be another artist discussion video. So, I'm going to go over the band Swans. Not all of their work in one video, that would be kind of crazy, but I'm going to be going over the 2010s albums that Swans have released. So, Swans are a band from New York originally, and it's kind of the artistic vision of one man, mostly, um, named Michael Jira. He's a guy in his 60s now, but when he started his musical career, uh, it was the early 80s, um, when he was first with a band called uh, Circus Mort. And then in the early no-wave scene of the 80s, he and his his over-cycling band, I guess, of new members, um, made some extremely, you know, <laughs> abrasive, uh, just atonal, very rhythmic, and brutal no-wave music in their first few albums. Transitioning over to kind of a more dark gothic industrial sound into just more gothic and eventually kind of like a neo-folk Americana sound. And then going over to uh, somewhat of a more alternative rock sound for a bit before kind of finishing in the end of the 90s with this monolithic, uh, dark ambient kind of sound collage of, of, of things that they had kind of, um, you know, snipped and clipped and put together from earlier releases and earlier uh, just sounds they had lying around and they made a kind of final statement soundtracks for the blind over two and a half hours long uh, and also a lot of the tracks on that album kind of were, were a precursor to the post-rock genre that emerged out of the early 2000s um, but then for the 2000s swans were not a band it was just michael jira and a couple guest cycling guest musicians so i guess the model wasn't super different than when he was running swans in the 80s to 90s but uh, the sound was different he had a band called angels of light and they made kind of more softer folk music with still michael jura's very um, biting and dark lyricism and then in 2010 uh, he brought back swans with a new lineup and that lineup persisted until 2016 and then after that they disbanded or 2017 if you count the live shows and then they disbanded and he came up with a new lineup for the last album they released in 2019 called leaving meaning but in the 2010s which is what i'm going to cover in this video michael jira released five albums with the band swans and those albums are my father will guide me up a rope to the sky in 2010 the seer in 2012 to be kind in 2014 the Glowing Man in 2016, and then finally, Leaving Meaning in 2019. So this video is just going to be about those five albums, because if I were to talk about the entire Swans discography, I'd be here for two hours. Uh, and you know, in, in two hours, instead, you could be listening to The Seer or something. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna try and keep it um, brief, but I'm going to go through just a bit of a discussion and review about those five albums. So first off, my father will guide me up a rope to the sky it's a long title i'm just going to refer to it as my father so my father is about a 45 minute album uh the shortest out of these five by far <laughs> actually and uh one of the shorter swans albums in general they they tend to put a lot of tracks on their albums or just have very long song lengths and so their albums typically tend to be at least 70 minutes um, just across their whole discography but my father will guide me up rope to the sky is kind of like a um, almost like a warm-up to what they were going to do later on so it's testing the waters with this new lineup of swans uh, of which there are six members i don't remember i don't think i remember all their names off by heart but i'll try there's uh, of course michael jira there's Christopher Pravdica, Pravdica, I'm not how to pronounce the name. He's the bassist. There is Thor Harris. He is the percussionist. 
uh, okay, I do remember, yeah, there's Phil Paleo, he's the other percussionist, and then there's Norman Westberg uh, on guitar, he's a longtime member of Swans back, going back to the 80s, and then finally there is Christoph Hahn, and he is the uh, lap steel guitarist. So, okay, so that's, that's the band, six members, and uh, they kind of performed f from 2010 to about 2017 together as a band. So on My Father, they... <sighs> It was their first outing as a new band, and Michael Giro was still kind of transitioning over from the sound he had with Angels of Light. So about half of this album is more or less kind of more folkier rock, um, more stripped back instrumentation, not as heavy, and uh, more lyrical, more lyrically focused. So uh, Michael Giro brings like his you know great uh, baritone and folk uh, singing style to some of these tracks like <laughs> reeling the liars in which is a very creepy sort of like cult mantra and then um you fucking people make me sick which is a <laughs> that actually doesn't have michael geron vocals that has um oh i can't remember the guy's name but it has uh, another artist on on vocals instead and then uh there is a another track called little mouth which is also kind of this more folkier type but the other tracks on the album are more the regular Swans type of sound. And that is, uh, oh, Devendra Banhart, that's the guy's name, who is singing on uh, You Fucking People Make Me Sick. But yeah, anyway, the other tracks have more of this like heavy instrumentation to them, um, a lot more uh, rhythmic, a lot more groove oriented, and uh, have this kind of repetitive riff that goes on and builds and sways and, uh, and morphs and changes and just, drives the track so the first track um, no words no thoughts has this at least for the for the first half it's honestly more f very fluid not even strained to a kind of time signature necessarily well there is but it's it's a pretty uh it's a pretty complex more loose one but then after the groove starts it just kind of you know rides that groove for a long time almost has like a galloping feel to it and then the track um jim is a bit slower but has this like really nice um uh, like th I guess it's kind of like a 3-4 th time or a 6-8 time one of the two kind of like groove that it goes with uh, really great track I love that one that one kind of like really builds and ebbs and flows and then there's My Birth which is almost like for the whole four minutes just like the same intensity uh, railing on this one um, pretty simple groove but with so much energy and then there's the song uh, Inside uh, Madeline which is kind of the same as uh is similar to no words no thoughts where it's kind of like this you know bit of a galloping groove that sort of like picks up and builds and builds and then it kind of ends on this more like you know folk uh outro eden prison the heaviest song on the album and also like my personal favorite on the on the album is just this very grating uh ab ab abrasive groove that they keep they keep building on and it just uh it yeah it really ramps up about halfway through it has a great ending has a reprise kind of near the end one of those tracks that make you think it's over and then it's not so yeah so there's kind of the two sides to this album um not like literally but like in terms of how half the tracks interspersed through are more folkier and calm and half the tracks or so are are just heavier and more of the um what people would expect from swans but with a different sound to it different lineup then there's the next album Seer, uh, I have it on vinyl here. So, the Seer is uh, on vinyl a tr three LP because um, it's just so damn long. <laughs> but the Seer is basically, yes, that is the dog's butthole on the back. Um, but yes, um, the album cover is pretty pretty creepy. Uh, you can see this dog is missing eyes and it has human teeth. Um, so yeah, this this album is extremely dark, uh, very almost apocalyptic sounding uh it, it really does sound like the work of a of a very um kind of you know frightening death cult and that's what i love about it uh <laughs> the first track lunacy i'm gonna put this up here first track lunacy is um is 
the, the first the first track is six minutes long uh, and it really sets the tone for this album which is it's gonna be it's gonna be an experience uh, <laughs> it sounds like almost like a cult chant that's kind of like running around in a circle um, you know throwing their hands up shouting lunacy a maddening amount of times but then when Michael Jira actually you know sings his his lyrical content on this album it's really interesting very rich full of uh, really creepy but interesting imagery um, and and it really this, this whole song just sets the tone perfectly and then we go into the second track which is mother of the world where you have <laughs> this repetitive groove uh, that's just almost like maddeningly just just continuing for about four minutes um, with things building onto it like such as a, a strange whale um, this like you know thundering bass riff uh, and then this like creepy organ that kind of comes in the background. Oh, and also the uh, the groove has this kind of like uh, almost like halted breathing that kind of goes through it the whole time too. Really interesting. And then about four minutes through that groove just kind of completely stops in its tracks and then the song changes completely and gets into like a kind of slower, more, uh, just more, more, textured groove which i really love and uh that's kind of where like the main lyrics come in singing about the mother of the world it seems to be kind of like an ode to nature um but also about how people just toil and kind of like pillage nature uh very cool very cool not as dark as, the, as some of the other tracks on the album the wolf is kind of a small interlude that's just completely vocal and acoustic guitar led with a strange like industrial background ambience that comes and cuts in actually halfway through and then the wolf only a minute or so long doesn't give you much of a break before the 32 minute long title track comes in which is just to talk about that is honestly like talking about an, a, a you know a whole album within an album but first half of that track is a really long dense build up that starts with a uh, starts from a bagpipe wall of sound drone and kind of simmers down into uh, a beat that kind of just expands and expands with um, tons and tons of layers of percussion, uh, backwards like reversed guitar sounds, and uh, eventually Michael Jura kind of chanting, I see it all, I see it all for a very long time. And that's actually the only real intelligible lyric on the entire track, which is a half an hour, a quarter of the album. The album, uh, or the, the track this year, does kind of change into this tumultuous, very just hellish uh drone for a bit of it where you have like these like loud guitar uh i don't even know what to call them really but it's it's not just guitar it's the whole band just kind of comes in to slam on a few chords and then go away and leave you in suspense and then come back and then go away and it, it doesn't really build into a, a sort of groove after that halfway point when the main groove just falls apart um but something so, things are happening and it's terrifying at one point it sounds like there's <laughs> there's a drill going off and just eventually the song simmers down into kind of this more drone-like calm but eerie section where you have a uh, harmonica that's kind of wailing over it and uh, it's just so creepy uh, <laughs> really really one of the most um, just dark and intense parts of the album not in terms of how much sound you're being barraged with but just in terms of the atmosphere being so daunting and then the track has kind of like a, a four the final four minutes or so is kind of a reprise there's another groove that comes in and michael Jura starts babbling like incoherent creepy nonsense that sounds like it's another language but it's probably just gibberish and uh and the track ends and <laughs> and then it just continues with that kind of darkness for the next few tracks the seer returns which is kind of a a simple pretty catchy groove actually it's very buoyant and bouncy uh, but with these very, very disturbing lyrics, you know, light pouring into people's mouths, um, being, uh, <laughs> having your limbs broken and pointing east to west, um, piles of writhing selfish bliss, and um, bringing the children home, whatever that is supposed to mean. But uh, the, 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 the track is phenomenal, one of the best parts of the album, and just the, the creepy lyrics and the uh, repetitive mantra of the... Um, the instrumentation just makes that one a fantastic kind of coda to uh, the Seer title track. You have a ride. And then, 
And then we have 93 MB Blues, which is, um, can't really describe this one, you just gotta kinda listen to this. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty nightmarish. And then we cool down on the album for a bit. We have the tracks, The Daughter Brings the Water, a kind of shorter, still creepy, but more listenable in terms of, uh, on the, e on the ears, it's more easy to listen to. Folk track, and then we have uh, the Karen O of Yaya Yaz led um, folk rock track song for a warrior, in which Michael Jira is actually backing vocals on, and then we have the uh, the song Avatar, which is kind of a, a galloping about ten minutes, uh, ten minute like you know, just adventurous romp that uh, that keeps building up and building up with this kind of like you know intense guitar slashes uh this kind of like these bells going off in the distance i think it's hammered dulcimer actually and then uh yeah ugh, th that song just keeps building and building it gets really intense and it's it's a lot more i guess light than some of the other ones just it, it's just a really fun groove and then you have kind of what i think is the cl climax of the album really uh, which is still 40 minutes of the album but the last two tracks a piece of the sky and the apostate 20 minutes each um are are just these expansive post-rock epics so a piece of the sky is about half of it is is kind of drone turning into uh, this like beautiful sparkling display of hammer dulcimer to a uh five minute groove and then the last five minutes is kind of this like nice ballad about uh about a creator or a kind of um you know power beyond and it's a, it's a really beautiful track and actually one of the lightest moments on the album and then the second uh second huge track at the end the final track the apostate is just uh it's it's reminiscent of the title track it's the first half is like this kind of building bubbling um hellish just just atmosphere building um you know i don't know what to really call it but like noise rock section where you have uh you know a groove that starts and stops uh you have guitars that kind of just come in there and just <laughs> fill the channels with like harsh noise uh you have drums that are kind of like you know all over the place and uh, you have this like drone that's that's just keeping the track uh in suspense and then about halfway through a groove starts and the groove just builds and builds and gets more and more crazy it sounds like everything falling apart uh and a cult just like exact relishing in it and just enjoying it and uh and then the whole album ends with uh, what sounds like um a cave-in and boulders falling everywhere and people getting crushed <laughs> so uh one of my friends recently listened to this album um and recorded himself listening to it <laughs> sent sent it to me and uh oh that was just such a funny funny thing to watch his reactions and everything like that it's it's a it's a great great album it's just uh it's such an experience to listen to especially the first time if you're not expecting what you're <laughs> you're getting into but like this is the first album that I listened to by the band, and it's really uh, it's really something phenomenal. And just the just the difference in that versus the last album and most things they'd ever done before is is insane. Like there there is if I look at the the lining of this album, um, well I guess I'd have to like pull out the uh, no it'd just be here it'd just be here. So like if you look at the actual you know there's the section with the lyrics and there's also a section underneath with all these special guests and dedications. It's actually about half of this page. Um, there are so many guest musicians on this album. They they really collaborated with with a ton of people, and uh, and there's so much work put into this this album. It's it's fantastic, honestly. Like, this is when the band uh, just got to another level, and that that's what really makes this decade of their music so good. Um, is just the amount of you know blood, sweat, and tears they put into making this work, and uh, it's it's this album is just is honestly a classic. Then they topped it with uh, 2014's To Be Kind. I think most people um, who, who at least are into the 2010's work of Swans like agree this is their best album. And many people think it's their best album just in general in their discography. Uh, to Be Kind is a uh, another two hour album. Uh, <laughs> it, it is more intense than The Seer. It's just not quite as, uh, as I guess, cult-like and not as apocalyptic and not as uh, doom-like. But it's... Um, 
it's really good. It's really good. It's it's more groove oriented. It's it's more abrasive. It's more noisy, and it reaches higher heights than the sear, because uh, the tracks just build up to the point that it just sounds like everything is crashing down, and you can't get any further. And then they keep going, and they keep building, and they keep getting more intense. You know, the the <laughs> unlike the sear, which is more divided into those two halves, first being very dark, very tumultuous, very just frightening and, and horrifying. The second being having those moments, but also having a lot more lighter moments and more expansive, explorative sound. This album is kind of like, it's not really split into those two halves uh, in, in, in my mind. I mean, I think it technically does have a side one, side two, if you look at it like that, uh, as a double album, but there's not a stark difference between the first half and the second half in my mind. Um, all of it's very groove oriented, very creepy in its sound, very, uh, very menacing and just has this like raw energy that is unmatched in most music that I've ever heard. <laughs> like um, the first track, the Serpentine uh, hypnotic screenshot just is eight minutes of just this building, dense layered uh, groove based, uh, you know, guitar rock music with kind of like rep repetitive mantra like lyrics about just things being erased from the world. And then Just a Little Boy is a bit of a slowdown, a very atmospheric, um, kind of almost like improvisational uh, jazz-like <laughs> track that just, just you know, uh, barks and bites and, and screams and uh, <laughs> recoils and, and stings you. And then the third track, uh, <laughs> Just a Little, oh no, a Little God in My Hands, A Little God in My Hands, is uh, a more catchy, groove-based track like the sea returns on the last album but then it's just it's just changed a bit by the fact that it has these explosions of just white light that just sears your eardrums uh and that's that happens about twice in the track in the in the track and uh and the the, the first one comes out of absolutely nowhere and it just completely knocks you out of your seat but then the second one has this this like maddening build up to it and then when it comes in it just um obliterates the track um, really amazing song <laughs> and then the fourth track on this album is also 30 minutes 34 minutes actually like the seer and uh it's called bring the sun toussaint louverture the bring the sun half of it is uh this huge mighty build-up that's like sounds like sun worshippers just praising annihilation of the world via the sun and then um that one just gets so intense it's like it's 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 beyond it's beyond any build up I've I've heard really, <laughs> and then after that you get this kind of improvisational last you know fifteen to twenty minutes of the album that's full of uh, Michael Jira just just completely losing it in the best way possible. He is shouting, he is chanting, he he is um, rolling his R's, he is barking literally, and uh, he is taking the perspective of a of a revolutionary leader who succeeded in the Haitian Revolution, Toussaint Louverture, and then was locked behind behind bars for his revolution. And it, it sounds lonely, it sounds haunting and terrifying, and it's just the sound of someone that devoted their life to achieving something and then now is being punished for it for the rest of their life. And they're behind bars, they're lonely, and they're reminiscing over what they've done, and they're angry and fuming and they can't do anything about it. And that's the mood of the last half of this track, and it is it is incredible. Uh, <laughs> and the, the last few minutes of this of this track is just white white noise that's just blistering and angry and all enveloping. And it's a fantastic finale to that to that track. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, interlude a bit with some things we do, which is just Michael Jura talking about some things that people do. And then we have. Uh, <laughs> She Loves Us, which is my personal favorite track on the album, which is just 17 minutes of extremely abrasive and and loud and intense raw power in music form. And uh, yeah, Michael Jura, you know, yelling expletives over um, building groove and, um, and, and uh, chanting cult-like vocals that kind of come in the background as backing vocals, uh, him sh shouting hallelujah. And... Uh, honestly one of the best grooves one of the best tracks in terms of its like sustained intensity uh and then you know <laughs> moves on to uh more 
Calm Track, Kirsten Suppine, which is for the first half very, very nice and very much of a breath of fresh air. And then the second half, just this like pounding, unrelenting, um, atmospheric build with percussion and, and droning, creepy guitars that just explodes into a, uh, you know, this, this, this noisy barrage of noise that like bounds you and hits you over the head for the last five or so minutes. And then uh, Oxygen, which <laughs> eight minutes of just intense, just 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 strangling music. Hard to describe this otherwise. It's just it's probably one of the heaviest tracks I've ever heard. And uh, it, 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 it's unrelenting. It's unrelenting, but it's so much fun. And then um, Natalie Neal, 10 minutes, a kind of galloping groove and, and a bit of a, a bit of a more easy listening one, but still intense. And then the finale, To Be Kind, first half is kind of a very almost sentimental, more lyrical section with uh, this kind of like choir-like ambience. And then the last five minutes or so is just this like, intense just these intense walls of sound one chord at a time that go on for about like 30 seconds each just 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 blowing everything out of the water and ending in the most dramatic and final statement that you can imagine for this album and uh it's it's a perfect closer so to be kind is a masterpiece and uh definitely worth all the praise that it got and um yeah, not, nothing much more to say about this one. It's it's the highlight of this decade for, for the music. And then you got The Glowing Man, a follow-up to To Be Kind. Um, two hours as well, but very different. Um, it, it serves as almost like a finale to the uh the, what people now call the trilogy of the seer to be kind in this one but the glowing man is a lot more low-key a lot more tame and a lot more um just 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 slower meditative more spacious and more ambient than the other ones but honestly that that's something i like this is kind of like the, cl the closer to maybe a godspeed you black emperor album than anything they've made this decade and maybe ever um but like I love the, I love the the first two tracks. Um, it's forty minutes or so of just those first two tracks, "Cloud of Forgetting" and "Cloud of Unknowing," and they are so emotional and so uh, just beautiful and uplifting, um, but still have that kind of dark, serious energy that Swans always have because Michael Giro's projects are always they always have that kind of tone to it, which which I love. And then. Uh, yeah, Cloud of Unknowing is, is a fantastic, fantastic track from its from its um, infectious groove that takes in about six minutes in to the uh, the calm, very just emotionally devastating middle section. Uh, fantastic vocals on this album as well. Michael Jarrett does more than, you know, his like usual chanting and shouting and screaming and barking and um, and, and that kind of thing like that he normally does. He on this album he does a lot more act, like a lot more melodic singing a lot more uh, lyrically focused. And also there's a lot of just kind of um, wordless vocal as well. Um, that's that's more common in this album. And a lot more female vocals as the backup on this album. But yeah, um, the world looks red, the world looks black follows the first two tracks. And that one has, uh, that one's probably the most repetitive one. Uh, it really gets you in a hypnotic uh, sense of just, um, <laughs> just, I don't know. Uh, it really sweeps you away and just gets you in a trance is I guess what I meant to say. People Like Us is a bit of an interlude, shorter track, more of a ballad. And then Frankie M, one that they actually played live before this album came out, um, is is amb about ambient, just spiraling ambient cacophony for the first eight minutes until it gets into this intense buildup that just keeps building and building. Um, and there's a kind of a bit of a, a ballad in there, just caked into it, about, uh, it seems like this guy named Frankie, who was a self-destructive drug addict, uh, who who was prone to violence and uh, that song just builds up and just is kind of it, instead of just being dark overbearing and hitting you over the head with uh, raw intensity um, which made the other albums previous albums really great this album and especially that song 
Frankie M in its in its intensity still has this like emotional potency to it that's different than the other two. Like it's kind of like it's 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 intense and it's 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 driving and it's brutal, but also has this like just sadness to it. Uh, and that's something that's that are, I think is really special about this song, Frankie M. But then you have Will, When Will I Return, which is a very lyrically very hard to listen to song uh, about about a uh, uh, about a certain type of assault. Uh, and that one is uh, that one's kind of painful to listen to in terms of in terms of the message, but whew, it's just very heavy. And then, uh, but the track itself is is very beautiful and um, very inspiring. And then you have the twenty eight minute title track, which is the, kind of the climax of the, to the trilogy in a way. It it reprises sounds and build ups and grooves that you've heard in Bring the Sun and. Oh, there's like that first two minutes of Bring the Sun on To Be Kind that are just two minutes of them barraging on on one note. And uh, they bring that back in this in this track, on The Glowing Man, the title track. But it's about six or seven minutes now, faster, and has more of a dynamic range to it, and has this just emotional value to it. And it, it almost sounds like... It sounds like a final statement, but the, the track isn't even done. And then you have... The groove, the main groove of uh, the Glowing Man track, which just gets more and more intense. It's just so, so powerful and driving and, and yeah. <laughs> I heard, I read a YouTube comment about this track that it sounds like, uh, like punching God in the dick. And yeah, that's a very good description of, <laughs> of how powerful the, the Glowing Man track sounds like. I am a glowing man. And then, uh, yeah, near the end of it, the last, I don't know, five or so minutes are just them creating as much noise as possible. And it's just, it's just so beautiful to listen to, honestly. The way it's produced, the way it, uh, it fills the soundscape, the way that it's just so final sounding um, is, is fantastic. And then the closer on this album and to the trilogy, Finally Peace, is actually a really beautiful track. Um, it really just comes in fast. It has Michael Jura singing alongside his wife and uh it, it's it's a really uplifting beautiful track and uh you know it's got piano sp sparkling production and instrumentation and um it's really nice and that's how they close the uh, the trilogy so <laughs> so yes most of the time on this video I was talking about the three main albums in this decade which is what i expected but finally i'm just going to close off talking about the album leaving meaning <laughs> So it came out in 2019. It's a double album as well, like the last three. And it's not quite two hours. It's about an hour and a half. But um, I was a little disappointed by this album, but I also understand what they were going for. So it's a new lineup, new sound. Uh, it's not nearly as heavy as the last four albums. And it's not it's not as not really quite as dark either. But it's it's spacious, it's ambient, it's uh, it's more calm, and it's more atmospheric. And uh, and yeah, it's it's pretty great though still. Uh, so Leaving Meaning has 12 tracks. The first six make up the first disc and the second six make up the second disc. So uh, what I really liked about this album are are the uh, the guest musicians, the soundscapes, and the lyricism. I think that it was very strong on this album. Uh, you have the first tracks kind of just an ambient intro, but then you have Aniline, just this really beautiful ballad uh, and then you, the Hanging Man, which is one of my favorite tracks uh, on the album, this kind of like s almost like stagnant flat groove that doesn't really build or get any any uh, any more intense. It kind of just stays the whole way. But that being said, it, it's really captivating the whole ten minutes of it, and it's 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 a gripping, suspenseful, tense track, and I I love it. And then you have um, uh, Amnesia, which I think is a very nice ballad, and I love the um, I love the uh, like the main guitar motif of it uh, and the, just the gothic sound to it really cool and then you have the uh the i guess the title track 
yeah, you have the title track, Leaving Meaning, 11 minutes long of just this blissful ambience and repetitive lyrics, but it's just so enveloping and beautiful, and I really like getting lost in that track. And then you have the track Sunfucker, <laughs> which is, uh, so, I've heard it described straight out of like the movie Midsommar, which came out in, uh, 20, in 2019, I think. And that movie's uh, you know, a kind of like horror movie about a uh, Scandinavian cult uh, and their very strange practices. And that's that's what this kind of sounds like. <laughs> like it sounds extremely dark, extremely cultish, and very creepy and sinister. Uh, and I love it. The first half is just very dissonant uh, and and intense and suspenseful. And then the second half is more uh, more rocking, more uh, intense, and more. Um, like heavier and uh <laughs> the whole thing though is terrifying but then the second second half i think is a lot weaker in my opinion um despite it having a lot more of the more like more rock sounds that they had on the last three but um yeah i, I really like the the track well it starts with cathedrals of heaven which is kind of like you know a more lengthier uh amnesia it's various i always get the tracks mixed up i do like the groove of that one though and there's again the gothic sense to it I really like this track, The Nub, though. It's 12 minutes long. It's uh, it's made in part with this band called The Next, which makes kind of this um, ambient, improvisational, uh, instrumental guitar music. And, yeah, that track really uh, really builds and, and becomes something beautiful and, and, uh, and just expansive and massive. So the third track is... Uh, it's coming. It's real. The lead single. It's a good track. It builds. It's pretty, pretty conventional. Tracks four, five, and six are um, are just not not really my favorites. That that album kind of loses me there. Like the last track, my Phantom Limb is interesting, and I do like how there's like all these layered vocals that are kind of you know uh, talking the whole time, and uh, and like it, it's very creepy, very ominous, and I do like that, but. Um, the, the the fourth and fifth tracks um, just are not really my favorites and I, I think that the second half of this album is just like a little over long and I, I think some of the tracks could have been cut but overall still still great stuff some new things and what is this that's right like what is this is a nice track it's uh it's it's very bright very happy some new things I just found was um you know it's while it's a good groove it just doesn't really go anywhere and it's seven minutes long and I I, I, I expect a little more from it personally but still. Um, for the criticisms I have for Leaving Meaning, I think it's still a very good album. Just, I think, the weakest out of the, out of the 2010s releases. However, I'm very excited to see where they'll go with this new sound uh, in the future. So, you know, if they have the, a similar lineup to this, um, I'm sure he can make some fantastic music uh, with this new lineup as well. And I'm sure he's not going to stop making music uh, anytime soon either, because Michael Jura, he just has this vision that he keeps wanting to put into music sound and uh it's it's um it's it's always great to hear what what new things he has thought up a new new inspiration that he has to continue his projects so so anyway that's my video on swans uh hope you enjoyed it um as this was just the 2010s decade i'm going to make two more videos uh one on the 80s decade and one on the 90s decade maybe sometime i'll also do the 2000s with the angels of light but uh, for sure those other two so anyway thanks for watching i'll have a new video uh soon on another band. So, see ya.